Hi friends, again we are back with another new concept that is the frequency compensation technique in operational amplifier. In this video, you are going to see why we have to use the frequency compensation technique and what are the methods are used in order to obtain the stability of operational amplifier. Means, in the previous video, we have seen what is the stability and how it is applicable for the operational amplifier. So if you observe the internal circuit of operation amplifier in detail, let us consider using BJT version, we are having number of capacitors internally. So because of use of number of capacitors, there exists an unstable in the circuit. So in order to convert that instability to the stability purpose, we are using one technique that is the frequency compensation technique. And also the second use is in op amp applications if one requires a larger bandwidth with closed loop gain means a lower closed loop gain then this method is very useful. Okay now we are going to see what are the methods of frequency compensation technique. In general we are considering a two methods one is an external frequency compensation technique and the other one is an internal frequency compensation technique. So, in the external frequency compensation technique, what we will use is by using some compensation network, we can convert an uncompensated op amp circuit to the compensated op amp circuit. And now, what is the compensating network we are using that we are going to see in the further video? Okay, and here, if you consider the compensating network used in external frequency compensation, is the passive element network means with the use of resistor capacitor and inductor we can easily convert an uncompensated network to the compensated network and now we are going to see internal frequency compensation technique since this internal frequency compensation technique is mainly used if we are considering only ICs in the application so recently if you consider the IC741 chip here the compensation is provided internally using a built-in lag compensation network. Okay so built-in lag compensation means here one capacitor is connected directly from input stage to the output stage which ranges a value of 10 to 30 picofarad and it is fabricated internally. So we are calling this type of compensation as a Miller effect compensation. So these ICs which are used uh, to provide a compensation internally we are calling it as a compensated op amp ICs. So this is internally is fabricated and now we are going to see what is an external frequency compensation technique and what are the methods. So in the external frequency compensation technique we are saying that we are considering one uncompensated op amp network and this uncompensated op amp network is converted to compensated op amp network with the use of some compensation network. That compensation network is designed with the passive elements and now what are the methods of that compensation network. So here we are having two methods. One is a dominant pole compensation and the second one is a pole zero compensation. So here we are simply adding poles and zeros to the uncompensated network in order to maintain in or in order to obtain the compensated network. Okay. Now we are going to see what is a dominant pole compensation and next what is a pole zero compensation. So in this dominant pole compensation network, how we are converting an uncompensated network to the compensated network we are going to see now. So let us consider that this circuit is having a gain of A which is nothing but an uncompensated circuit which uses an operational amplifier for its application. Now this circuit should be converted to the compensation circuit. Okay, so in order to convert an uncompensation circuit to the compensation circuit, we are using one external network that is RC. Okay, so this external RC is directly connected to the output of an uncompensated circuit in order to provide a compensated output. Okay, now we are assuming this it will provide a compensated output circuit, but how it is 
mathematically proven now we are going to see so now this is nothing but one rc circuit okay so for this rc circuit we are assuming it is having a lower cutoff frequency that is fl and here we are assuming that lower cutoff frequency is nothing but a dominant frequency and it is indicated by fd okay and we are and also we are assuming this gain nothing but the uncompensated gain of operational circuit is having a three frequencies that is f1 f2 and f3 and it is having three poles and here one pole is externally added to this uncompensated network okay and here we are maintaining that condition that is this dominant pole frequency is always less than this three frequencies present in an uncompensated circuit that is the relation is fd is less than f1 less than f2 less than f3 so here f3 is the highest frequency and fd is the lowest frequency now we have to find out what is the overall gain of this circuit so before finding the overall gain of this circuit first we will find out what is the gain of this external compensator network so we know that the gain is nothing but the ratio of output voltage by input voltage let us assume that the external compensator network is indicated with a gain value a1 and it is nothing but v0 dash by v0 so here the output voltage is v0 dash and the input to the rc network is nothing but the output of an uncompensated network which is v0 we have to find out this ratio v0 dash by v0 how we are going to find out is simply we are using voltage division rule so by using a voltage division rule we will find out the relation between v0 dash and v0 so here if you observe this circuit this v0 dash is nothing but the voltage across the capacitor so if we convert this circuit into the s domain this r is replaced with r okay and here this c is replaced with 1 by sc now what is the voltage division rule it will tell so we can write the v0 dash as total input voltage v0 into corresponding branch impedance that is 1 by sc by total impedance that is r plus 1 by sc so if you take the lcm then it will be v0 by 1 plus s into rc okay so finally the v0 dash value is v0 by 1 plus s into rc so we will get v0 dash by v0 is 1 by 1 plus s into rc now here we have find out the external compensated circuit gain is a1 is equal to 1 by 1 plus s into rc okay now we have to convert this s domain expression in terms of frequency domain expression now this is converted by simply using the equation that is s is equal to j omega here omega is nothing but an angular frequency we can write omega in terms of frequency as j into 2 pi f now simply substitute the value of s in this equation we will get a1 as 1 by 1 plus j 2 pi f into rc now let us assume that dominant frequency is nothing but fd and its value is 1 by 2 pi rc okay now the value of a1 in terms of dominant frequency can be written as 1 by 1 plus j into f by fd so this is the final external compensated network gain in terms of f domain now we have to write the equation of gain for an uncompensated network which is represented with a okay so we are assuming this this uncompensated network gain is having a three poles nothing but three frequencies that is f1 f2 and f3 we can write the equation of this uncompensated network gain is a is equal to avol is nothing but the open loop gain of uncompensated network by three poles that is 1 plus j into f by f1 and second one is 1 plus j into f by f2 and third one is 1 plus j into f by f3 
so this is the gain of this uncompensated network so finally the overall gain is let us indicate this as a naught which is equal to a into a1 so the final equation is a o l by 1 plus j into f by f1 1 plus j into f by f2 1 plus j into f by f3 and final equation is 1 plus j into f by ft so we know that this fd is nothing but the value is 1 by 2 pi rc okay so by selecting the values of rc in such a way that this dominant frequency should be very low compared to these three frequencies f1 f2 and f3 now let us observe the magnitudes of compensated and uncompensated network so here if you observe this uncompensated network the gain of this network will fall to 0 db at some frequency nothing but a highest frequency okay so at some particular frequency let us assume it as fh so at frequency fh the gain is falling to 0 db and it is passing through minus 60 db per decade at last but here if you observe this compensated curve the gain is falling to 0 db at the frequency f1 of an uncompensated curve we know what is the value of f1 okay so here this fd we know that its value is 1 by 2 pi rc so we have to select the values of r and c in such a way that it will for the loop gain of the compensated circuit will fall to 0 db at a frequency f1 of this uncompensated network so if you maintain this condition then we can easily convert the uncompensated network to the uncompensated uncomp network okay so for this circuit the advantages are simply it is stable why because uh, for the uncompensated network we are con connecting some external circuit which becomes a compensated network which will provide a stable oscillations and also here the bandwidth is very limited okay so here in this condition the bandwidth is very limited which is a frequency f1 which is also a known value and the main disadvantage is if you want to increase the bandwidth then this method is not useful so in order to overcome this drawback we are going for the second method that is pole zero compensation technique okay in the next video we are going to see what is the pole zero compensation and how the drawback of dominant pole compensation is overcome by using a pole zero compensation technique thank you